trying to get the protesters to move back a little bit. We can see this gentleman from earlier. He's, he's putting his arms up. He's asking, you know, he's guiding the protesters back. And there are actually some people who are clearing the road of some of the obstructions the protesters put in. People saying, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here today. You kill our people. So it looks like, you know, it's the organized, some organizers are trying hard to get these protesters to move back, but it's, you've got a lot of passion building up. A lot of masks are up already. Gas masks, face masks. So it looks like there's a, now some of the protesters with masks are forming a chain, pointing their backs to the police. And we're standing right in the middle. So again, for those that are watching on the on live stream, I've got a chat feed up, and uh, there's a lot of comments coming in, but I can respond to to some of them. It's as many as I can. Since the police moved in, it's actually the protesters have, you know, the group has grown uh, a little bit. The protesters are pointing their backs at the police and linking arms. They've put a few obstacles in the road here. There's uh, one lane road ahead, there's a street cone, there's a couple of them. A few bottles have been thrown in the street. The police are just holding their line where they are. They've given the warning multiple times to the protesters to disperse, but they've also given media several warnings as well. They said that we were in to clear their space. And they said that anyone here is subject to arrest and or other actions. You know, we can only assume what that means. I think we all know what that means. It's hard to see exactly how many officers we have because of the lights. It's also raining just a little bit down here. So back and forth, you know, some protesters are pulling these uh, these these road signs into the street, pulling them out of the street. The movements of the protesters is really unpredictable because so many people want to push the line, they want to move forward, but a lot of the organizers want to pull back, they don't want a confrontation. Oh, God. 
So we've got some of the activists. All right, people are starting to run in this direction. I don't know exactly why, but it's always better to keep an eye open before darting off in a direction because you see people darting. Whew. All right, so the protesters have moved back and forth in the street, out of the street. It's hard to know exactly where this is going to go, but just a moment ago, a group of protesters started running in this direction. Now, maybe this is them pulling back, but it's really hard to tell. People are running. This, all right, this is looting. All right, this is a field... Field Beauty Supply just had its door smashed open and people are running in and just grabbing. Hey, get the fork back! Hey, get the fork back! Hey, get the fork back! Get the fork back! Get the fork back! The Al Jazeera crew just getting charged by someone in front of the store. Hey, we going now, y'all. Hey, we going now, y'all. Let's go, bro. Looks like some of the activists don't like this guy who's intimidating press. Gas masks? They're full face masks. Let's do it. Masks and helmets. Dude, yeah. They're pushing, these guys are pushing press out too. Let's go. The... Y'all better go back to whatever city you came from. So these guys that have broken into Field Beauty Supply, one of them came out, charged. The first thing we saw was the Al Jazeera crew out in front got charged by this guy who then pointed his eye straight at us and the other journalists. But it also sounds like some of the other activists were yelling at him saying, these guys are recording everything you're doing. All right, we're gonna run. So we have our armor, but we're gonna go for our masks and our helmets. trying to break this liquor store open and our car is right here. We shouldn't go in the car. Hey. We can't go in the car. All right, so our, our car is parked right in front of this liquor store that's being looted right now. And we just heard from the guys in front that if we know it's good for us, we better back off. So here's this guy in this hat. He's the guy who was pushing down the press, but with these guys are storming into this liquor store. So the problem is if we we can't get too close. Yeah. So we're parked right now in front of this liquor store. And they just broke in and they're looting it. We tried to get close and they told us if we know it's good for us, we better get out of here. So this is the second time we've been kicked out by the protesters who are looting these stores. One nineteen a.m. The protesters pulled back from the street and they're going for the stores now. So the other store, STL Cordless, just across the street. This guy seems pissed. He said we wasted a whole day. I'm sure there's, it seems like there's a lot of people here who are mad that now everyone's looting these stores. But across the street, looks like there's an electronics store and that window's, that window's busted open. Hey man, had him, had him leave that shit alone, man. But there are people here, they got their eyes on us and the other press too. For those that are just tuning in just a moment ago, we saw an Al Jazeera crew in front of this Field Beauty Supply straight across the street get chased out. Now there's a huge group of people in front of this door. Dude, if we... 
know, but like... If you get in it, it's... Yeah. Who are you who are pressing for? Vice. Oh. Man, when you're, when you're called, called, what do you say? We just need to get some more. She could do it. There she is. Hey, let's give her the keys and ask her to move it. Did you see that? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our car's right in front of the door. We, we, they, they've yelled at us. You know, it's obvious. Can we hold your camera and you move the car? Wait, they yelled at Yeah, they're like, news crew, if you know it's good for you, you better back off. And that's our car sitting so right in front of the store. Sure. She has the keys. But you have to give the camera, keep your phone. Oh, I see what you're saying. Be careful. Just get in and put it over on the street or something. Is that car like normal? Because I'm not the best driver. It's, 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 yeah. yeah, it's just... So we got people filming us, too. We're not going to pull anybody that we're not press. So we saw it. So we've just seen a pretty serious escalation in the in the action that's happening here. We got a trash can in front of the stores now rolling through the parking lot. Several stores have been broken into. The police have not yet moved forward. So we got a lot of people running. One twenty-three a.m. here, Ferguson, Missouri. For those that are just tuning in, this is the site of the Michael Brown protests. And about an hour ago, we heard that some tear gas went off, and people didn't react too well to that. Now we're hearing rumors as to what officially started, but we can't really know. What we do know is that the police moved in, and people reacted very, very negatively. We've seen several stores broken into now. They're going after this liquor store. Now across the street is Field Beauty Supply. That was the first store that we saw hit. An Al Jazeera crew was out in front filming when someone came out and just rushed them. So Melina threw us there. This is where he's yeah. So this is a liquor store where Mike Brown is suspected of stealing cigarillos. And right now this crowd is just going at it. Come on, man. Come on, man. I'm just saying right now, that was so fucked up. That was some messed up situation. We trying to bring peace, and they just went into the uh, Berkson Market where he actually, uh, Mike Brown, stole some cigars or something, I don't know, but they went up in there. And we just, we just, want, we just want justice and things to be right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not with this. Not at all. Not at all. Everyone's rushing over to this liquor store and they're going at it. We just saw it. I understand it, but someone try and grab the camera of a journalist. It's getting bad out here. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take pictures and everything. They, that's what they offer for. I'm sorry, I'm gone. <laughs> People are trying to pull their cars out. I'm glad we we get, we got ours out when we did. Someone just ran by yelling, "Get money!" They're coming. Someone yells, "They're coming!" Yeah, it's not clear how long this is going to go on before the police make their move. But look here, this bench has just been shattered. There's glass everywhere. The police have still not made a move. And we've seen, so far from where I'm standing, three stores 
have been smashed and people are just, they're just looting. Someone in the car yells, get out of there. We still aren't seeing any movement from the police, but when the police move in, it's gonna be indiscriminate. One twenty-six a.m. Ferguson, Missouri. For those that are just tuning in, this is the Michael Brown protest. The police started moving in maybe about 45 minutes ago. About 35 minutes ago, we saw the police come to the front of this line. They haven't moved, but this set people off. Several stores have been looted. This ATM looks like it's, uh, it's cracked, still working. This bus station has just been, has all the glass shattered. So fortunately, you know, our car was parked right in front of the liquor store and we were able to move it just in time. So if you guys want to know more about what's going on here, make sure to check out vicenews.com. We've got some stories that will we'll, we'll tell you about this past week and the tensions that have been building with the police and with the protesters. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. I've been posting videos and photos uh, here on the ground, but also check out at Vice News on Twitter for, uh, and Instagram for the bigger picture. Park the car wonky in this way, but it's like in the middle of the road. It's like, I can't park it. <laughs> in the middle of the road, huh? Well, not quite, but like, it should be moved before everybody starts driving out. Like, right? So it actually looks like this ATM is, is fine. But this, this liquor store is getting it. This is the second. So this guy with the camera has been going in a couple times, but they've been chasing him out. The first thing we saw was an Al Jazeera crew up at the Field Beauty Supply across the street. Hey Tim, a CNN crew got attacked here too. Just, just recently? Yeah, just recently. Do you want to tell us, do you see it? Uh, it was a CNN crew led by Steve Kasdenbaum. Uh, the shooter went in, uh, well the photographer went in. Went into the liquor store. He went towards that store, he made it just past that red car, um, and right afterwards, he got immediately attacked by a guy in wearing all white with a white mask. Steve cast him down, he pulled him back, they went back to the truck. Thanks, man. So we got 360 degrees to keep our eye on here. We got the police on one side and we got protesters each side of the street. Ferguson Market and Liquor. Now this is the site that Mike Brown allegedly stole the cigarillos from. But again, for that, re that report that came out, the officer that killed Michael Brown didn't know he was a suspect in this robbery. So it seems, well, it's totally unrelated as far as most of the people here are concerned. Put that camera down, bro. Go ahead and go. Hey, put that camera down. Uh. I like this guy in the white. He just gets loud when the people come at him. Well, we got the police now flying overhead. And it looks like the police on this side is still, they have not moved in, but we're hearing more announcements. And it looks like most of the, the protesters here are, are moving back. This is, this is intense. So on all sides, we've got Feel Beauty Supply, we've got STL Cordless, and Ferguson Market and Liquor, they've all been looted. And the, and the, you know, I don't even know what to call them anymore. The people who are around us, these, you know, these protesters, people wearing the mask, I feel, you know, it's, 
they've already given us a lot of warnings. They've, they've chased media out. We, we're hearing that a CNN crew got attacked when they went up to try and film this. Looks like the police chopper just made its move. Now starting to shine its light down on all of us. One thirty one AM. Now it looks like a lot of the cars that were in this road have started turning around. There's still some protesters up in the front with their hands in the air. So it's starting to rain a little bit heavier. But most of the people that were in the area, uh, just, just around these three these, these, these stores, they've, they've pulled back a bit. And the police haven't moved at all, but you know, just it's about uh, 40 minutes ago, we saw some bottles get thrown in the street. The police gave several warnings. I just found an umbrella, this is gonna help. So I'm trying to keep it a little discreet as we're getting closer to the, the larger crowd that's already given us, you know, they've already threatened us several times. Hey, another night in the ghetto! <laughs> Police chopper straight above us. So it's 1.33 a.m. here in Ferguson, Missouri. For those that are just tuning in, this is the site of the Michael Brown protests, and things are devolving quickly. We've got police on one side. We've got protesters looting several stores in this area. So if you're just tuning in, you need to find out more. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at TimCast. Check out ViceNews.com. cameras draw attention down here. So as soon as these guys started breaking into some of these stores, there's an Al Jazeera crew out in front of Field Beauty Supply got chased out. So we're trying to, you know, it's, it's hard to be discreet when you got cameras out, but we've got the police straight, straight ahead of us. And it looks like the protesters are falling back. Now, just where we were, we saw three stores looted, but it's hard to know what happened down the street. Oh, yeah, they're moving forward now. So it looks like the police have actually started moving forward very slowly. But it looks like there's broken glass in the street. We've seen the bus station, uh, I'm sorry, the bus stop glass has been shattered out. We're getting rained down a little bit here. 1.35 a.m. All right, so try and give a, a bigger recap. I tried to cut it short a little bit because I had a crowd coming around me and we've already gotten several threats. But you know, the other day we heard from the governor, the mayor, we heard from the, the chief of the state patrol who, who came in and took over the operation that things are gonna be different. 
So we really didn't think we were going to see something like this. Today we saw it. We saw Ron Johnson, the chief of the state trooper, uh, state patrol. He was marching with the protesters, and we saw Congressman William Lacey Gray. He was here as well. So it really seemed like just a block party. But sure enough, you know, just after midnight, things started to get tense, and now we've got the choppers, the police helicopter above us. And the riot police are make are slowly moving forward now. Person saying the police said they don't want nobody to get hurt. What do you think? Where do you want to go? I think I hurt my trail. Yeah, that's getting more and more difficult. But the Panthers, like, they were really reasonable. Yeah. We've we've seen a lot. Uh, there have been there have been quite a few protesters who seemed really really bummed out by the looting, and they came talk to us and said, you know, you know, we lost a day here. So we've seen, you know, a few people, I wouldn't say they gave it the best effort in the world, but they did make an effort to try and stop the looting. But, you know, when you've got dozens just running straight into these buildings, breaking the windows, charging in, the few people who are, you know, are asking for, you know, everyone to be reasonable, it just doesn't, it doesn't cut through. <laughs> Saw this guy burning out. So when, when, you know, we were here an hour ago, it was just a party. It was just music, cheering, break dancing, some, some people playing drums. We had news crews doing interviews. We had a congressman. We had, uh, you know, the chief of the state uh, patrol. They were all here marching with the crowds, making their rounds. Hour later, riot police move in. People react very negatively. As soon as these police moved in, you could see the crowd got heated. And then it only took a matter of, of minutes before these buildings got broken into. So this woman saying that they're marching the other direction. And it looks like most of the streets now have been cleared out. But some people are still hanging behind. Some people are filming the stores that got looted. Now the Ferguson Market and Lakers still got a crowd in front of it. We're not gonna be able to get anywhere near that. So I'm not sure if that's anything going on down there, but there's a lot of smoke. We saw a moment ago somebody was peeling out in their motorcycle, so, you know, these kind of things, they really mess with you. The other day we heard two loud bangs that, you know, everyone started bolting as soon as these, these pops went off, and then we heard, no, no, fireworks. So everyone is just has been on edge with the, with the police action that they've seen so far. But the, you know, the row of riot police here, they're just slowly making their move forward. Everybody is watching this fight! They 
Now, I can't tell exactly what they just said, but I think they just said these are advanced police vehicles. And they've given several warnings uh, since they moved forward that if you don't disperse, you'll be subject to arrest and or other actions. You know, based on what we saw the other day, it's probably tear gas, rubber bullets. We've heard some, some reports of wooden bullets, but, you know, I guess the, the finer details of what kind of riot weapons they're using when it comes to, you know, less lethal bullets, it's, it's, it's hard to know until, you know, someone actually finds one. But tear gas we've seen, we heard there was tear gas earlier today. So now it's quiet. There's still a lot of people around. Police said, please disperse. Um, I couldn't make out exactly what, what they said. It sounded like, please disperse. We don't want anyone to get hurt. Well, so several stores got looted, but most of the protesters have made off in the opposite direction of the police. They're still giving their announcement. They're saying they don't want anyone to get hurt. Please disperse. We got the chopper over us, and it's hard to know exactly where this is going to go. One forty-two a.m. here in Ferguson, Missouri. You know, we've heard a few activists. They said, you know, we we taken a step back. We we lost a day. You know, some people were. They seemed really really bummed out. They tried talking to us on camera, but you've got all these people who are you know trying to shoo the cameras away, telling us you know get out of here, go back to where you came from, things like that. And uh, you know, all this action from both sides is only attracting more attention from everyone, trying to figure out why this is happening. Before the police arrived, this was, you know, basically a block party. And you had people in the, in the median since yesterday guiding traffic and, and trying to keep the road open, albeit traffic was slow. It took, you know, 15 or 20 minutes to drive down this one stretch of road on West Florissant. But, you know, it wasn't completely blocked off. You had people out. There were, it, it, was, it was positive energy, it felt like. You know, people were upset, but, you know, it seemed upbeat, break dancing. You had music. But as soon as these police, you know, pulled up, it just went straight down, and now there's looting, threats. It just seems like everything's just falling apart. Every, all the progress they made yesterday just seems to have just been washed away. Uh, she was just standing by us. You wanna? Yeah. Well, looks like Al Jazeera is going for the same plan. So it looks like we got a bunch of people in front of the liquor store actually trying to protect it. They got their hands up. So they can understand us and understand and feel our presence that we down here and that we feel the reason why it's not right what they did. Right. That's why we down here. Why do we have to do their job and they stand them right there? Why, they, what, what, what do you mean? Why, 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 are they they do why we got to protect and serve and we right here. Instead of trying to shoot the only thing. 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 Instead of trying to shoot
You see, there's a group over there. It's a group over there. It's a group down there. You gotta stop everybody from going to this Because niggas are opportunists, as some people like to call them, want to try and see an opportunity to fuck up other people's hard earned life work. We ain't about this. ain't what we want. This ain't Protecting the store. No. By any means. Are you living in Ferguson? Yeah, we all live in Ferguson. You gonna shoot? You gonna shoot? We 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 gonna shoot? No, ma'am, because if they That's shoot me, I haven't done anything. They just got another unjustified murder. Are you worried they're going to think you guys right. looted? If we would have added they, to it, would have kept I'm not worried about anything, because if they shoot me, they just got another unjustified murder. Somebody that ain't going to understand they feel where they're coming from, let's tell them that. But do their job. They're not telling them. They don't feel them. You're not where we from. They don't care about us. The police don't care about us. We just got to get out of here. We're going 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 to they're saying, why do we have to do their job when they're standing right there? We ain't all a bunch of ignorant niggas. We civilized. We all don't know. And that's what they look at us at. They're a bunch of ignorant niggas. We got to respect all of us. I respect for the community. I respect. I'm not even from this neighborhood. But I'm down here. You know what I'm saying? That's why I see the fact because I see them doing something. They young. I'm way older than them. I got 20 years. These young brothers, I like the fact that they doing what they do. I got 20 years in this neighborhood. I'm from Louisiana. Why would we want to keep losing the stores? It's the way we got to shop and see that we got to eat and protect them. We already we proved the point. We proved the point. What's the what's the sense to keep doing it? We already make it understand. Long as we stand out here, we know they keep it on the news. It's pressing them. It's all they hear. I need to think about this. Mike Brown. In the verdict, and what y'all gonna do about this? Because Mike Brown will win. What the police gotta understand is that we are nonviolent with those that are nonviolent with us. Right. Thanks for talking to us, guys. How did the other people who are looting react to you guys trying to stop them? How did they react? How did they react? I don't know. They reacted as like our own kind of turned against us. We are for protection. We ain't never for that bullshit. That's all we know for. Texas. That's nothing else. It's gonna always be man after police, but still. Um, we're, we're, we're not gonna keep going to the store. If we, we gotta need do to it ourselves in our neighborhood, if this Half us stay out of this what it takes for us to do it ourselves, then that's what we so, gonna so do. So look, one more question. What's your message to the media that's gonna be showing the pictures of people looting all in the store? Well, don't all don't of us ain't niggas. We all like niggas. niggas. Police brutality will not be accepted. We all like niggas and police brutality is not accepted. That's our message. We all like niggas We all human beings just like everybody else human beings. We all I hear every day like everybody else out here every day. Listen, look, can, you, can one of y'all talk? This is my mama on the phone. She think we out here going crazy. Can you talk to her tell her that we're not doing nothing? We're not doing nothing. Hello? 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 Your, son, your, your son is being very responsible. I, we're not I, doing nothing. She, I'm a TV correspondent. Don't worry. He's being very responsible. We're not doing nothing. She on the phone think everything's going crazy. She, they finna shoot you. He's okay. We're not doing nothing. He's okay. Nothing. Stop crying. He's, 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 he's fine. He's okay. He's being very responsible. Responsible. Mike he's, Brown. He's doing an interview Mike with the TV Brown. channels Mike right now. Brown. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Trayvon Martin. Mike Brown. Eric Gardner. Mike Brown. Trayvon Martin. Mike Brown. Eric Gardner. Mike Brown. Yeah, he's fine. Don't worry. He's fine, really. Okay. She lose. Okay. She's worried about you. Mom. She's crying. Uh, yeah, because she think um she think they gonna shoot just to see out here. Get up to all the parents out there. We all like niggas and we all protecting the You guys think? You guys think the mask? Are going to send the wrong message to the police? They have already. They have already. This is a crooked ass investigation. Can you just please? Can you just? We do. We are okay. So for those that are just tuning in, these these young guys out in front of the store are protecting it. They're saying, why why would we loot the store that we have to save and we have to shop in? And they all seem really upset that people actually were opportunistic, did what they did. But they're standing out here. We have the police just on the other side of the uh, of the road. And you know, I guess one of the concerns that we see is the police aren't going to discern between these these guys who are standing in front with their hands up. They want us to fuck up our own community. That's what they want. Why give them what they want? 
You don't give the enemy what they want. Right, so we can bow The police down. will just always, like saying, and we always. Them know we're not saying all white people. We said saying the crooked cop, because it ain't just white cops that's crooked. When I, yeah, when I say We're not saying them, one, so, we, the don't, so don't get it misconstrued. Because I'm telling everybody trying to make it in a white and black. It's, it's not, not a racial thing, thing at all. Racial. It's the fact that you shot that man nine times for some so-called stolen It's the fact that you still got a protest for it this shit. It don't make shit. no sense. My grandparents did this shit. I shouldn't have to do this shit. We're in here, can we do a quick interview with you? Y'all got it online? We have it online over here. I like push that down. Like I said, one bad apple. We can't let that go. Sad to say, so, you know, the media. Don't let them see the story. Don't let them see that. They're going to media. They don't see the story. They don't see the story. No disrespect to you, you know, I just don't want it to be portrayed, it's been a lot of, you know, the media has portrayed it to seem like, you know, the biggest thing is the looting, but they don't see the peaceful protests that's going on, they don't see the tear gas that they're shooting on the people, they don't see how they're shooting wooden bullets at us, they just see the negative, and then they take it, and then they take away the bigger message that Mike Brown was murdered, unarmed man, shot more than nine times, and he was out there for multiple hours with any shit on anybody, that's just ridiculous. My brother was killed. My brother was killed by a I apologize, I'm not trying to you guys I just can't tell you your name. I'm the witness. Everybody loses in the community. We lose. All these dudes right here, not going to live to see 25. What kind of stats is that? The thing is, my grandparents fought for this shit. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to be on that. My grandparents are back in the day. We've been fighting since our So we got a crowd of journalists crowding, uh, gathering around these these young guys who are trying to protect the store. So they've been standing out here for a while. And admittedly, you know, after this place was looted, with all the people who were in front running in and out, and us and told us to back off, we thought these guys, we didn't know what they were doing standing in front. But there was a crew from Al Jazeera, they started making their way up. These guys put their hands up. And then it turns out these guys are actually protecting the store. And they've got a crew on, they said that there's people on, on, on both sides of the street sitting in front of these stores. You know, they, they said that these people who broke in, they're opportunists. And that's not everybody. They're the peaceful protesters and they want to show everyone that. So it's, man, seeing stuff like this is just really sad. You've got these committed, passionate guys. They're taking a big risk doing what they're doing because the police, they're, you know, they're breathing down our necks. They're right here and they're giving us the warning. And it's, 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 you know, it'd be hard to believe when the police come up that they're going to discern these guys who are trying to protect the store from the looters. It you know, definitely seems like most people have made their way out of this area already. The police have only moved up about half a block. Now, now at the, uh, the the front of this road that we were just on a moment ago. <laughs> All right, so it's 1:54 a.m. And for those that are just tuning in, we're in Ferguson, Missouri, at the Mike Brown protests. So just about a block behind me there's a burned down gas station, a quick trip, and that's been ground zero for these protests. Now, just straight behind me now is the liquor store that they, they claim that Mike Brown stole a pack of cigarillos from, and uh, about an hour or so ago, it got looted. And there's a few stores across the street that got looted as well. The police started making their move. The, you know, the mo before that, the mood here was very festive. It's, it seemed more like a block party we had. We had a, a congressman down here, we had the chief of the state trooper down here marching with the protesters. But as soon as the police pull up, everything just goes straight downhill. We heard that shortly before the police arrived, there was some use of tear gas. Other than that, just rumors, it's really hard to know exactly what set this off. But what we do know, when the police pulled up and gave their warning, people did not take that well. And within minutes, we saw three stores, the liquor store right here behind me, and two stores across the street get looted. So if you're just tuning in, make sure to find, uh, you can find out more about what's happening by checking out vicenews.com. We've got a bunch of stories, uh, we've got a few stories up explaining, you know, what's been going on for the past week. 
You can find at uh, Vice News on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me reporting here on the ground at Ferguson on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. So that's uh, Vice News and TimCast for more information. Really appreciate everybody who's watching right now. So we're going to stick with it and just see where this goes. But it, it seems like most of the people that were here have left. And it seems like, you know, the, this is Florissant Road right here. It seems like it's mostly opened up West Florissant Road. I'm sorry. Right, there's a lot of cars moving through. And it's, you know, once they get to the line, they see the police. They just pull a U-turn. Seems like it's definitely calmed down a bit, huh? When this stuff starts, you know, when we, we first got down here and we saw the police making their move, every, every second felt like a minute, every minute like an hour. But as soon as, you know, we started seeing the police inch forward, as soon as we started seeing the, the looting, it just, it's just hard to keep track of, you know, the time. But the other, you know, really interesting thing that I, that I need to stress again is that we've got a group of young men in front of the Ferguson Market and Liquor Store, uh, they're protecting it. They have their hands up. And before, when we were first watching this store get looted, we had a we had a lot of people come and threaten us. They said, you know, if you know what's good for you, you'll get out of here. This guy right here in the vest actually got, I guess I guess you could say attacked a couple times. They grabbed for his camera. He told us that a CNN crew got attacked. So when we saw this group of uh, of young men in front of the store, we thought it was the same people. But sure enough, an Al Jazeera crew made their way up. These guys put their hands up and said, no, no, we're protecting the store. They came in, they said, we've got people across the street at the other stores trying to keep it safe because we're not opportunists. They threw that. Yeah, they threw it. They threw this early in the um, hour. They have not thrown no tear gas since then. What does it say on there? Just, does it say CS? Ball CS. Ball CS. Yeah. Man, they threw this early, but they ain't it smells like propellant. Yeah. Is it heavy? Um, it's probably about the, about the weight of a grenade when it's full. That's what it is. You mind if I... Oh, it's got stuff pouring out of it, man. Pouring. Yeah, there's, there's like black powder pouring out one of the sides. It's gunpowder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gunpowder. So I'm wondering if this is a flashbang grenade or if it was tear gas. It was tear gas. You saw the gas shooting out yeah, of it? Yeah, I can still feel it in my nose. Do you know why they why they threw it? Um, I don't know why they threw it, because when they threw it, they left. They ran. They came up to about where they were right now. Down the street, and then that's when the crowd dispersed. But they all, you know, we all came back, and now they went, they left, then they came back, and that's why they, that's why they're here now. But the message is out here, you know, things happen, people get emotions riled up, but we're not out here to, to protest. Hey, we are here to protest for us all to come together. That's what it's all about. There's a lot of hate out here. There's a lot of hate. It's focused towards us. All the way down and that's on the, the truth. other side. I just, I, okay. I just walked up. What is? What, is what are you holding in? What's going on? This um. This what I do. This is a uh, tear gas. Oh, hold on. All right. Can I take a picture of it? This is what they use. I'm sorry, buddy. Are you? Oh. Yeah, I want to take a picture. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> So it looks like on the side there are four holes and there's tape. There's like a, a label that goes around the whole the whole thing that says something ball dash CS. And the area where the holes are, the, the, the label's actually been peeled back. So that's we saw black powder pouring out of it. It seems like you know that's where the, the, the tear gas comes out of. But this this guy told us he saw the, the gas coming out of it and, and he and he grabbed it. He said that he saw the the police move in, they threw it and they ran. You know, right, right where they were at this line.
So it's just been about an hour and a half, and things still pretty tense, but we've, we've been able to take a breath. You know, I, the, the people who are remaining, they're, you know, it's much calmer. There's, there's still, most of the press has, has stuck around. Most of the people that were here, hard to know the, the exact numbers, but it, you know, maybe around 200 could be a good estimate. They, they took off in this direction, the opposite direction of these police. And the police have just held the line. We actually, aside from that guy holding that tear gas, we haven't seen the police do much of anything other than move forward. But it seems like one tear gas grenade is enough to, to set people off. And, you know, it's, you know, you don't have to wonder why. But as soon as these police made their move and they pulled up to this, uh, they started getting closer to the protest, the protesters reacted negatively. They, they took to the street, they, they put their hands up, they pointed their backs to the police and said, shoot us in the back. The police gave the order to disperse. The police even ordered media to disperse. But it only took a, a, few, a few minutes after that, maybe 10 minutes, and the stores started getting looted. So I guess we'll... Which is cool, but it's like, okay, so people are going to Yeah. was killed in 2000 by police and she came all the way from California because she wanted to be a part of it. She saw it wow. and she's like, I want to be a part of this. Well, a lot of people were breakdancing here. So we're, we're hearing that uh, a young woman was telling a story about how her, it was her brother? Her brother was, her brother was killed by police in 2000 and she came all the way from California because she wanted to be a part of this. So there's still groups of people scattered around. It seems like most of the group has been dispersed. The road is you know, it looks open now. The police are just holding their ground. So we're going to stick with it, see where this goes for the moment. The police, they've given several orders to disperse, they, more than several, but they haven't made any moves aside from the initial tear gas uh, grenade, which, you know, we don't really know why that happened. <laughs> if you didn't take the camera off of him? <laughs> well, it's a threat, but, you know, I guess it's the most interesting threat we've heard. Like 
like we see it's dysfunction the same and disorder thing with no police. Soccer games in other countries when they start to riot and then people come in and start to lose. So you guys thought you tried to stop them and they told you they were gonna shoot you? Yeah. Yeah, that's their mentality. But that's not if people who've been out there. That is not the people who've been out there. That's not they are completely separate. I'm right. talking about they have not been out here all day. And they wait. They wait until they hear that this that the this started. This is why the police started that. The, the looters come when they hear that, because you can hear about it on social media, when they hear that the police start to do this stuff with the tanks and trucks, then they know that, that it's time for them to come. That's how you know because they have cars. Everybody else's car was parked. They come, they come from nowhere in their cars and drive to loot. They wait until they hear about the military, military, no, no, militarized, militarized police. police. And then they, they come. Because they, right they know they can't right. come. Right. They know they Because they would have to come through yeah. everybody else. It was just random. It was like 20, 30 random. people. Like 20. Not all but it, what, they weren't together, though. It was like two people here, three people there. They hear about that. They hear it when the, before, if the police don't do this, this, that won't happen. And the media was putting it out like it was the protesters who got really mad and started doing that. No. It's not the protesters who get really mad and start doing that. The protesters, the, and they showed it tonight, the protesters, when they started to loot, the protesters got mad at them and stopped them. They they made a unified front in front of that store. When they heard this last break, they ran to make to do this in front yeah, of the store. French and the whole bunch Antonio, of us ran in front of it. They said stop. And, it wasn't and then even, when it Antonio wasn't French left, when they came back, they was like, oh, we're going to come shoot y'all there. Antonio in. French and joined Rose. them. Like, yeah. these and were Rose. protesters and you young men and civilians who just stopped it. They yeah. stopped their looting. And I made sure some of the media saw that. And y'all have to tell that story. This is... These are separate people. The looters are separate, completely separate. Wait, sorry, I don't want to. We're not going to make this sound weird or anything like that, but it's So, a lot of people here, they don't, they don't want their faces on camera because they said that people they know have appeared in the media being accused of being looters. It's 2:08 a.m. So we're just hearing now from from the locals here. I'm gonna. I, I can't shoot their their faces. That they were, you know, they're they're trying to avoid being. Nothing about the robbery, or that Michael Brown was a suspect in said robbery. So that being known, and yet the media is still spinning it over and over and over. It's it's a part of race. It's embedded in this country. This country is built on race. People say this country is built on freedom and all this and the third. No, it was encoded in the laws that certain people weren't people. That when three fifths of a person were tax purposes intended, like that is a known fact. So to be able to go, there's a post race for America. Is that the third? Then no, you, it's so much shit structurally, like embedded within the fabric of the Constitution itself. That racism what is embedded. Are you so smart? Can I explain your name? Sure. I think, it's, I think it's an important point, and I will include this. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Who are you with though? With Vice. Oh hell yeah. Let's do Vice. Oh, yeah. Let's do Vice. Oh, yeah. Let's do Vice. Me too. Oh. So, the problem is that people don't trust the media right now is because the media is a part of the whole system that, from the very beginning of this country, has been embedded within it. Embedded within the Constitution itself is that racism is embedded in it. So, black people from the very beginning, from the very start, when they said that we are for a, here for liberty and freedom. They meant it for white male taxpayers. Black people were three-fifths of a person with tax purposes attended. So within the, the documents that founded this country that we base all our laws on, that in itself, racism is embedded in it. So to try to fix structural racism where we're going to do one little thing here or one little thing there, that's not enough. That's not how it works. To fix racism, you have to rebuild the system from the ground up. So even though you have things like the 13th Amendment, the 18th Amendment, you have different amendments that try to fix the racism embedded within it. You have to also with the people itself. You have the St. Louis Dispatch actually did a thing yes, yesterday. The, today, they put out, they went over to Florissant and asked white people in Starbucks, what do you think about what's going on in Ferguson? First off, most of them weren't even watching the news and had no idea what happened, but they knew a boy was killed, and their reactions were, well, what did he do to deserve it? I know he did something. That is embedded within the system. That is embedded within white privilege and within just the country itself that people are bad because they deserve it. We have this whole Pat we have this whole puritanical system that is set up from the people who got kicked out of England for being too radical that they were like, all right, you got to go. 
that if you people who have bad things happen to them had them deserve it. And so since we must have deserved slavery, we must have deserved Jim Crow, we must have deserved hundred to one crack laws, we must have deserved the war on drugs, we must deserve racial policing. So now, if you have that in mentality that black people and it gets passed off from person to person and generation to generation that black people deserve what happened to them, then when you go ask them, they, there is no questions. It's well, wrong happened to them, so they must have deserved. And that's why people don't trust the media, because the media runs with that same narrative, because if they try to do something fair and balanced, like Fox News says they do, if you try to run fair and balanced, you can't, because fair and balanced means, what does our audience want to hear from the news? What does our audience think the news is? And so we give them that. We don't, and that's, that's the problem with uh, partiality within news, the partisanship in news. There's so much partisanship, you got MB, MSNBC on the left, you have CNN that tries to be in the middle, but they're really more like Obama, middle right, and then you have Fox News, which is insanity. So that's the problem. You don't, no one's actually talking about the news, it's talking about what they think the news is, what they think of the news. There's no news channel that's saying, this is what happened draw your own conclusions. Like, that has to be, That's the problem. We, 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 we have made this country so bereft of critical thinking and thought and ability to process knowledge that the issue is going to be to get people to think about issues for themselves and go, here are the facts, draw your own conclusions. No, people go, well, so now what should I think? I'm going to listen to Glenn Beck. That's why they had the joke about when Dave Chappelle was talking about Ja Rule. He was like, why would people ask Ja Rule when he thinks on 9-11? Like, no one's asking for his opinion. No one cares about his opinion. No one wants to dance. I'm scared to death. That's the problem. We ask for people. We don't care about Kim Kardashian's opinion on me. Someone's going to ask Kim Kardashian about Ferguson looting. No one cares about what Kim Kardashian thinks. What is, Kim Kardashian's not a political scientist. She's not a sociologist. She doesn't study history. No one cares about that. But for some reason, our country is built on deferring to uh, authority. And the problem is there is no real authority. Everybody's authority is different. Some people believe a doctor. Some people believe Jenny McCarthy when it comes to vaccine. Some people believe Kim Kardashian when it comes to makeup. Some people believe scientists when they say this is dangerous and it has chemicals in it. And that's the issue, that there is no unified authority. We have a Congress making decisions about environmentalism when the environment and their lawyers, they don't know anything about environment. They're not deferring to people who we trust, who have worked their lives to study something. We're not deferring to that. When it comes to racism, we're asking a panel of white dudes about racism. When it comes to sexism, we're asking a panel of priests about women's rights and women reproductive rights. It's insanity around here. We trust people that aren't in the arena that they should be speaking in. And that's why we don't trust the media, because they're in the arena of blackness and black experience. And no one cares about the black experience until something bad happens. And then it's used as a tool to paint us as evil, as destructive, as animals, as everything else. That's why you have stuff like AP during Erica Katrina. White guy foraging for food. Black people looting. AP ran with that. No one checked him. There was never an apology. There was never a retraction. That's the issue. And if we want to fix the issues, we have to fix the issues from the ground up. And it's the media's responsibility to be fair and correct. Y'all have to show the unity that's been out there today. And you have to show that. And you have to show the unity. You can't. You got your part. Vice is dope. No, vice is dope. Vice is dope. Greg Thomas. Make sure you quote me. I am an information security engineer that works in Chicago. So. And I speak at diversity, I speak about diversity in, in technology and in, uh, and in hacker spaces. So, because I'm, I'm a hacker bullet, so. I speak about the fact that there's only three, four black dudes most, and it's 98% white male. So I try to increase diversity and talk about how we get more diversity in that field. So. Thanks, man. No problem. Yes, uh, yes I am, M-I-N-O-S-S-E-C. Minosec, um, if you look at anything from like uh, different B-sides uh, conferences, I speak at those, all my videos and stuff on there, so. Okay, cool. All right, so what do you guys think? Most of the people have cleared out, so we just heard a very impassioned uh, speech. I don't think people have cleared out. No, no, most of the people have. I mean, people are still here for sure. The police are still here. But the big crowds we saw earlier, 
you know, they clear out of the street. And it's, it's also possible they, they've actually just spread out down the street, but there's no one main cluster now. Two sixteen a.m. here in Ferguson, Missouri, it's the site of the Michael Brown protest. It's been going on for the past week, and you know, yesterday we saw the the switching of the police uh, command. Essentially, that the, the the state patrol would be taking over. We saw the the chief. Ronald Johnson marching with the protesters yesterday and today. And just about an hour before, you know, the police showed up, Congressman William Lacey Gray was here too. But for whatever reason, we're hearing, we've seen a tear gas grenade with some black powder pouring out of it. And someone told us, they said the police, they ran up through it and ran back. And then maybe 15, 20 minutes later, the police line formed just down the road from the protest, started moving forward. Within minutes, looting just just kicked off, and uh, it got real tense real fast. But now, the people here, there's a group of young men that are actually protecting the liquor store, just on the other side of this McDonald's, and uh, across the street at a Feel Beauty Supply, and what looks like a, an electronics shop. People are actually protecting it. And, uh, you know, we're hearing over and over again from the people here that... These people who came in and started looting, they're not from here. They're opportunists. They wait until they know the police are coming and they run. And we even heard one of the guys looting. He said, get money. But then after that, we see these young guys standing in front saying, you know, these guys are opportunists. We're here to protect the store. So it's just, uh, it just seems like a really difficult situation for the people in the community here. So I definitely say the tension has died down. You know, we still have some people hanging out of their cars, driving through the street. The road seems to be mostly open. helicopter flying overhead. The police still holding the line just down the street at Ferguson and West Florissant. But things seem to have calmed down quite a bit. I'm 
Brown. It reads Justice for Mike Brown. A young girl about the age of 12 says, he dead already. Just let him rest in peace. No, get out. I stayed in jail for that. For him, for him not to just be dead. He's not getting die of natural causes. All right, so it's 2.22 a.m. We still have the police chopper flying over us. We still have the line down by Ferguson, just uh, about a half block in front of where we're, uh, where we're at right now. So we're going to make our way over in just about a second and uh, see what's going on. But it looks like the road's been open. People are still here, still playing music, still, still dancing. A lot of people have left, but, you know, it's still going on here. So I'm gonna make my way down to this police line, see what what's going on. They've only moved forward, maybe a quarter of, the, of, of a block. They are in the middle, and now they're just about most of the way to Ferguson, but not quite. We we still have a lot of people down here. We haven't been hearing much from the police, but we have seen an, uh, a spent uh, CS grenade. Is our it said ball CS, something else written on the label. Some black powder was pouring out of it. We still got a lot of people here on the corner. But the, you know, the tensions we saw earlier with, with the looting, it's mostly gone. But you know, we still got people you know, here standing opposite the police. Some fireworks just went off. Some people have been shooting off Roman candles, and it sounds like we just had a bottle rocket go off. So here's the police line. It's it's kind of hard to see because they got the brights. So when this group, these ride police and these vehicles pulled up, people just reacted really poorly, or I should say negatively. They didn't take kindly to the police, you know, coming in and ordering everyone to disperse. Now, the first thing they told everyone to get was to get out of the street. As they said, so the people said, okay, you know, everyone clear out of the street. And then the police said, get in your vehicles and go home, otherwise you'll be arrested. So, you know, people weren't having that. But it only took a few minutes after the police showed up for some people to just start looting these stores. Now, we talked to a few people who said, these people aren't from the neighborhood. 
So this is Feel Beauty Supply, which you can see is just right next to where the police are. When people broke into this store, there was an Al Jazeera crew that had walked up and someone chased them out. And then once we went over to the other side by this liquor store, we saw the same thing. People had repeatedly threatened us and other journalists. We even saw one guy get grabbed. And he, he told us that uh, he saw a CNN crew had gone up to film and someone actually attacked them. He's doing a good job at keeping everybody involved. Listen, let's support. Let's stop the looting in our city. Let's rally together as people. So now it looks like we've got a few. We've got press up here in the grass. I'm gonna try and get a little bit closer. So we've got some of the organizers now working to guide traffic. So I don't know if you guys can see yet, but looks like something's been thrown through the door here and all the glasses have just shattered. Some fireworks are going off in the distance. This window is just in pieces on the ground. And then straight across the street, Ferguson Market and Liquor. This is the liquor store where they, they say that Michael Brown stole cigarillos. before he was killed. However, again, I gotta point out that it's also been stated by the police that the officer that killed Michael Brown didn't know that he was a suspect in a strong arm robbery, is what they're referring it to. So it, it seems like the incidents are completely unrelated. And, uh, and the killing was the direct result of the police ordering you know, two young guys to get out of the, get out of the street. For whatever reason, they released the, the surveillance footage and a information packet saying that he was a suspect. You know, we can only speculate. But most people here are saying it's a smear campaign, and the family's saying it. So we've got these young guys here in front of the liquor store. I've been protecting it. We actually got to speak with them earlier. One of the guys said that his mom called him and she was, she was worried. She was freaking out, crying. They handed the phone to a, a journalist from Al Jazeera and asked him to speak to his mom. And uh, the Al Jazeera journalist actually talked with this young dude's mom and said that he was being responsible and that everything was okay. She was worried that he was, he was gonna get in trouble, the police were gonna get him, that he was, gonna, that he was looting or something like that. But this is one of the guys that, that came up to protect the store from the looters. So we, we still have the police chopper flying overhead, but I'm not sure how much longer this is going to go on. You know, the road's still closed by the police. There's still lingering crowds all down the street, West Florissant. So we should probably, it would probably be a good idea if, uh, if I w went over to the, the gas station and checked that out again. Let me see if I can sync up with my crew here. So a lot of people over here have asked not to film them. So I'll be pointing the camera down just you know while we're over here talking to people. 
what's up. Now, with this shit being said, that one put someone on camera, I'm the real you want to talk to. You want to talk to St. Louis, I have all these niggas surrounding you motherfuckers. One snap, they'll surround you motherfuckers. What I'm talking about is, y'all want, y'all want a coverage, but y'all want. No, we're just trying to find out what's happening over there. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who you want to fucking talk to. Alright. You know who the fuck you talking to? I don't know. We have no idea. We're from out of town. Okay, talk to me. Talk to me. On camera. I'm okay. going to record this shit. Oh, you're so tall, though. You're going to have to. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one. What's Same your name? Time, though. Huh? What's your name? My name is Trayon Knight. Trayon? Knight. 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 I'm Alicia Knight. Yeah. And hey, one thing for sure, too, for sir, we're not playing with no motherfucking police. We're not playing with no fucking police. Let me tell you something, tell you something, tell you something, Tom, tell you something. I'm, I'm gonna get my real name, Thomas Knight. I got my real name, Thomas Knight. Thomas Knight, Thomas Knight. And don't play around with this shit. Thomas Knight. And don't fucking play. You motherfuckers come out here and stop playing, man. Stop playing with this motherfucker. It's every, you hear me? Stop playing. Stop playing. One reason because you're on that racism and shit. Same time, don't play with us. We give you respect, you give us respect. We don't give respect. Now you want to see something from Common Cat the phone. You know what I'm saying? Time is motherfucking night. You hear me? Hey, y'all got that money on deck now. I'm going to tell you one more fucking thing. One time play, we fuck you up. Same time, we bought that money, man. Same time, RP money. God did a lot of told by this guy that we're banned. I just so he said something like hitting us with a bottle if we don't get out. And then he starts going to a car and starts pointing at us. What did he say to you? Did he say he was going to hit you with a bottle? No, he was kind of warning us, like, it's about to get bad. Yeah. And he was threatening us in a way, like, get the fuck out of here, but not like, I'm going to hurt you. Yeah. How much y'all paying for this real shit though? How much y'all paying? Put this up in my face. Oh, I thought you How much y'all paying? Y'all want, want shit, this real shit, how much y'all paying? Huh? I said, how much y'all paying? Y'all want shit, this real shit, how much y'all paying? Y'all good? Yeah. I don't know nobody yeah. trying to find me. They just trying to go for peace for something. We can't, we can't, they're not covering this. Don't, 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 don't throw no names up then. Don't throw no names up. Nah, they're covering the peace. Hey, so we want the money. Fuck the media. Fuck the media. Y'all still fucking with us. Fuck the media. Y'all don't never tell the good shit. This is all y'all don't know. No, they ain't covering the good shit. They're not covering the good shit. No names on that place, man. Don't know that shit. Don't know that shit, dog. Don't do that. Y'all want to cover the real shit. Don't write some plates, no name. Okay. We got it. We want to do a good job. Get the motherfucking cameras out of here before we talk to the motherfuckers. Flat out. We love y'all first. We do things a bit different. We like to tell your side of the world. Y'all do in St. Louis now. Y'all see what St. Louis do. I know. Y'all see what we do. Fuck up out of here. Stop. 
So once again, we're being threatened for being press. They're yelling, you better run, Betsy. She's about to hit you. I think I'm Betsy. Yeah, no, yeah, you're definitely Betsy. Uh, I am not Betsy. I was, but, uh, I was more of a Veronica. You know, the, the interesting thing about seeing stuff like that is that, you know, people still haven't, you know, I guess the technology is still relatively new that we're live broadcasting. And for those that are unaware, I'm using an iPhone. So it's just a mobile broadcast. You know, we're not... I'm, I'm wearing a big press thing on my chest, and uh, I've got a you know I've got a cable coming out of my phone charging it, so it's not like we're you know we we we're, we've been asking people hey we're filming we've got a our crew here we've got a you know professional camera with big microphone on and everything they know what's up, but I guess most people just don't expect the the small equipment to be broadcasting live. Really. And then they say things you know they threaten us they say stuff and then they say like don't record that but you know we're live the whole time. But it's rough, you know. The, you know, some of the people who have told us not to film, they've been saying that the media gets it wrong. They only portray the looters. They say that we're bad, bad people, and all that stuff. So they get, you know, they get threatened when they see us. You know, so I definitely don't blame anybody. This is their community, and they've, you know, they got to deal with this press every day. They got to deal with, uh, you know, the police putting out these statements about, you know, this young guy who was killed that, you know, are seemingly unrelated. So it looks like some people, Yo. so the police are making an announcement saying do not advance, but it looks like people are starting to get close to the, to the riot line. You, you want to get out of here? No, but I'm just saying, because I just can't get, the police is definitely not going to be able to get close. Or not sure. Yeah, yeah, no, we're good. I, I, all right, they, they, they said this so many times, and or other actions. I, I just have to say, that's very, very vague. You know, you can't expect people to just understand what that means. In other parts of the country, we've heard them say that you'll be arrested and there will be the use of canines and less lethal weapons, but here they're just saying, and or other actions. But it looks like a small group of people has slowly started moving toward the police line. We've got, looks like a lot of media, people putting their hands in the air. And so the police are starting to make their announcements again. So aside from, uh, you know, just back there, is some, there's something going on. It seems like some kind of headquarters for a lot of people, and they've warned us not to go anywhere near it. And just a moment ago, we just had a guy come up and essentially threaten us, tell us to get out. Said we were banned, pointed at us, and then we've had a bunch of people yell at us. Uh, it's not the first time it's happened tonight. But we're getting it from both sides. The police have made the announcement. The media has to clear their, their operations space or something along those lines. 2.40 a.m. So for those just tuning in, I'll give you guys a quick, uh, quick recap. We're here in Ferguson, Missouri. It's the site of the Michael Brown protests. It's been going on for about a week. This is a young teenager who was shot and killed by a police officer. Uh, now they, they, the police report... The eyewitness reports their conflicting stories. The police said he reached for a gun. The eyewitness has said that he had his hands up. And so that's, you know, where we get the slogan from, hands up, don't shoot. It's been the chant for the protests here. Now, earlier today, this, uh, this whole street was basically a block party. We had people just seemingly having a good time. Uh, they're definitely angry. We heard a lot of impassioned pleas, you know, saying that this has to change. You know, it's another, another kid killed by the police, and they want justice. But... You know, at some point after midnight, we heard that the police threw a tear gas grenade uh, just across the street behind me, it's Ferguson, and then ran. And we actually had someone show us this, the, the spent grenade with the black powder coming out of it. Maybe about 15, 20 minutes after that, a police line formed and started moving in, and this set the protesters off. They formed a line, they, they pointed their backs to the police, put their hands in the air, and they said, get us in the back then. 
hands up, don't shoot. The police didn't take much action uh, at all. They just, you know, slowly inched forward eventually, but really nothing happened from there. But protesters broke away from the crowd and they started looting the stores. So we've got this liquor store right here, Ferguson Market and Liquor, which is where they claim that Michael Brown stole cigarillos. Across the street, we had Field Beauty Supply and STL Cordless, which looks like a, uh, an electronics store. People just broke the glass, stormed in, and shops down the street have had that happen. So now, everything's sort of calmed down. We've got a small group of uh, young men who are actually guarding the liquor store. And the police are holding, holding the line up here at Ferguson. And uh, they just made a few announcements again not to approach the line to back up. So, you know, as it seems like a, the crowd is, has thinned out. A lot of the tensions gone down, but, you know, we're all still here. And it's been a, it's been a few hours now. So if you're just tuning in, you want to find out more about what's going on, check out vicenews.com. We've got uh, a few articles up explaining the, the greater context, what's been going on this past week with the police, you know, what we've seen down here. Uh, you can also find me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Timcast, T-I-M-C-A-S-T. And you can also check out on Twitter and Instagram as well, at Vice News, for, for more reporting around the world, more stories. Uh, right now I'm here in Ferguson, Missouri. All right, so it's 2.43. Fee just went down for a moment, got it back up. For those that are just tuning in, this is uh, Ferguson, Missouri, the site of the Michael Brown protests. We had a lot of tense action happen just uh, in these past few hours. Riot police are still here forming a line. There's been one, uh, some kind of, uh, we're told it was tear gas. It's a spent grenade. It's at ball CS. Uh, the, the front part was, was singed, but the end of it was a uh, ball CS. So we, this guy said that he saw the, the gas coming out of it, and he smelled it. It was tear gas, and he held up the grenade for us. So, you know, you can see the police now. They've made their way up, up the road here, just forming a line. We've seen several stores looted. We've, uh, we've been warned by the police to, to back off their space. The police have given several warnings to, the, to everyone here to, to go home, otherwise they'll be subject to arrest, quote, and or other actions, end quote, whatever that means. Uh, where's your, where's your live stream from? But, Vice. Vice? Uh, yeah. But, you know, just a few moments ago, we got another threat from some of the, from some of the locals saying that, you know, we're banned from here, we gotta leave. And they uh, threatened us. Told one of our, called one of our producers, uh, Betty. Said, "Better, you better run, Betty." It's definitely tense for the people down here, on both sides, uh, for everyone. You know, press, locals. Several bottles were thrown earlier. Uh, nothing, with n nothing anywhere. Uh, nothing, uh, I would say, that had the potential for hitting police. You know, a little bit further in front of where they were. But we've heard from, uh, you know, during the, the looting, we had a lot of people going after press, telling them not to film, stuff like that.
So this bus stop here has uh, one of its panels just broken out, shattered. And now we've just got people lingering, it seems. I'm trying to see if I can find my my crew. Did you check out the Field Beauty Supply? No, why did they? Did you go in there? I didn't go in there. I went and checked it out, though. I don't feel like that's... I'm like... No, they didn't look like Yeah, no, and I feel like everybody's, like, begging us to, like, make a point. Yeah, that's, that's the point I was like, sure. But do you see, um... Jason? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Yeah, we're hearing a lot of rumors down here, you know, as to how this kicked off and what's currently going on, but for now it's really hard to know, but we're here. So it seems, it seems like it's calmed down quite a bit, but we still have the police line, which seems to be most of the tension. It's, it's hard to say what it actually looks like the police are moving out. Looks like one of the APCs is turning, I'm not quite sure. Nope, actually it looks like it might be pulling forward. But we're seeing some movement from the police vehicles now. All right, well, it seems like for now, Things have sort of gone, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely gotten much, much calmer. So what I'm going to do from here, I'm going to take the feed down. I'll be tweeting. I'll be posting to Instagram. You can uh, find me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast, but also make sure to follow at Vice News as well for, for the bigger picture, for more context. We will be down here. I will be posting photos and giving updates. Should anything pick back up, should it get, you know, should something go off, then uh, we, I will be live, so we, we will have the feed uh, on standby. So for everyone who's watching, uh, thanks again for, for, for tuning in, for sharing the news, for, for staying apprised of these situations here in Ferguson. Uh, check out vicenews.com. We've got some stories. Uh, we've got a lot of stories from around the world, but you can read the stories from Ferguson if you want to get the, uh, the, the greater context as to you know, what's been going on down here. So again, many thanks. Stay tuned. We're here. You know. If anything happens, we'll be we'll be back live.
right now. What's up? Want me to move? Right next to us? Yeah. The gas station right there. What? Make the legal one? Get into that parking lot right there. Throw. Just say we've been All right, <laughs> so the for gunshots, armored cars. We just heard. Armed. We gotta we gotta get back in there now. There's someone on the ground already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna jump out. All right. So gunshots, police moved in, we pulled off. I'm trying to loop around. And the police are moving into this, looks like there's a store next to this Domino's. All right, I'm pretty far away, but we got a large group of police here. Just a moment ago, this street was almost empty. We were, s man, my apologies, but my heart is racing. We heard a gunshot. I don't have one, sorry. Did they fucking shoot him? Somebody fired a gun before the police pulled up. And now the police... Now the police were? Now the police are moving in. And they're... Are you a police? No, I'm a journalist. You're a journalist station. I'm from New York, from Vice. You see how crazy this shit is? This is crazy. It's bad, guys. It's crazy. Don't please don't put me on TV. No, I'm, I'm trying to film the... Uh, So we're getting told to leave. All right, for those that are watching right now, we were actually just leaving the scene. We were heading to Walmart where we heard there was some looting going on. We were trying to sync up with someone else from our crew when we heard gunshots. Just as that happened, we saw some police vehicles pull up from the opposite direction, and right now they're outside of this Domino's. They got some guys on the ground. Claire is just straight ahead. Make sure they can see press, nice and large on my chest.
3.51 a.m. here, Ferguson, Missouri. The Michael Brown protests. I can't hear. Yeah, I can't understand. So for those that are just tuning in right now, this just happened at a moment's notice. We were leaving the, the areas most people have, have, uh, have moved on, and we heard that people were making their way to Walmart. So that's you know, what's going around on, the social, on social media. We made it just right here, uh, this parking lot over here on the right, when we heard a gunshot. We look over to our left, and straight down this road, we see just a huge huge police force that's what we're all standing for that's a that's what we're seeing right now now there were a couple guys who were in the store next to the dominoes it looks like no we didn't see them but the police moved in pulled out their guns started flashing their lights it was really hard to tell what was going on but before i knew it there were two guys on their knees with their hands on their heads and we're getting ordered to turn around so we, we pulled off and parked and right now now we're, we're just a few blocks away from the, uh, the site of the protest. And, uh, you know, the police are, they've got high-powered rifles. They moved in, guns drawn, armored vehicle. Looks like they may have made a few arrests. Looks like they got one guy being questioned right now. So just in front of the dominoes, it's really, I, I think it's hard to make out on the camera, I'm not sure, but I can see an officer wearing armor with, a, with an assault rifle. And it looks like they got a guy straight ahead in cuffs and it seems like he's being questioned.
3.57 a.m. here in Ferguson, Missouri. So we heard a gunshot. We saw a bunch of police pull up, point their guns at some guys, get them on the ground, they're on their knees, hands on their head. It's hard to know exactly what's happening, but it looks like somebody was looting this store. We're not sure if the guy they have detained right now is him, but just a moment ago the police ordered us to move back for our safety. Officers, they're busy here, so they, they are not answering questions when we ask them what's, what's going on. But another journalist is here asked, you know, for instance, can you believe there were gunshots in the area? She couldn't get that, but uh, there's an officer now who's in the parking lot of the Enterprise Leonard Bar. He's got his uh, helmet on, his visor on. Uh, so, I don't know, for those watching, you may have heard the other, the, other, the other journalist who's next to me made a very important distinction. We heard what we believe uh, was a gunshot. Uh, so this, this store right next to the domino, Domino's looks like it, it has been looted. Uh, we pulled up, we were, we were in this parking lot just across the street, and we heard, you know, with how quiet this area is, you were a few blocks away from the main protest site, most of the people have moved on. Bang, some people were running, it sounded like a gunshot, but we can't confirm it. Uh, we tried asking uh, the police, but, you know, for obvious reasons, they're not responding. Uh, but we did make our way back, and it looks like they are going in. They are not messing around. Armor, assault rifles, armored vehicles, multiple armored vehicles. But it looks like they might only have one guy detained. I'm not sure if they have two. Is the guy who's standing here since the beginning? I don't know this if guy? He's a witness or what? You want to go ask him? I kind of want to. This guy, this, this one officer who's repeatedly pointing his assault rifle at this garage here, he told us he'd be. He's worried that this area is not secure and someone might come out and fire. So it looks like they actually may have taken the cuffs off of this guy. He's walking with his hands free. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Uh, and we can't get a statement from the police. Got a phone in his hand? Call? After we heard that, that bang, did you see you saw people running? Yeah, I saw a few guys running down the street. I, I can't confirm how many. So it's definitely more than one. It could be two or three, it could be more. So definitely a couple people running down the street after we heard this bang that, you know, to us sounded like a gunshot, but, but we can't confirm that. All right. So, what's up? So I kind of feel like we could move on to Walmart and see what's going on. And yeah, that. let's go. Yeah. All right. So for for those that are watching, you just tuned in. We just saw a large group of police move in. We we're across the street. We're making our way to Walmart. We pulled over. 
to uh, you know do some logistics, talk to some of the uh, our other colleague, uh, Alice, when we heard a bang, it sounded like a gunshot, and a couple people started running down the street straight ahead. It looks like the store's been looted. Police pulled up, strobe light flashing, coming out with, you know, it's an armored, armored vehicle, armored personnel carrier, assault rifles drawn, yelling at us, clear the traffic, keep it moving. It looks like they detained one person, but he may have had his cuffs removed, so it's really hard to tell what's happening. So we're going to go check out what's going on at Walmart and see if anything's happening. Uh, it's, it's actually really early in the morning now. It's, you know, it's actually gotten pretty late in terms of the protest and the police action, but this seems to have, you know, just be a police operation that looks under control, so not as tense as it was just a moment ago. Uh, if you're just tuning in, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Timcast, T-I-M-C-A-S-T, and check out at Vice News as well, V-I-C-E-N-E-W-S, and check out our stories on vicenews.com. We've got uh, some great writing about what's been going on here in Ferguson since the start of the Michael Brown protest, so, so check that out. Thanks for tuning in. I will come back live should anything happen. We are here on the ground reporting. I'll be posting photos and videos to, to Instagram and, uh, and tweeting as well. So stay tuned. Thanks again. Uh, we'll be here if anything changes.